and gentlemen, it's awesome to meet you all in this metaverse. And welcome all of you to the award ceremony of Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award organized by Wylon. I'm Yun, Strategy and Project Director at Wylon. It's my great honor to present the ceremony to you. This award aims at recognizing and celebrating the wonderful contribution of outstanding scientists and startups under the Wylock SciTech Four Pillars. First of all, I would like to thank you all for joining this ceremony despite your busy schedule. Guests gathered here today are all key stakeholders in the ecosystem of science and technology in Hong Kong. We are very pleased by your presence. In particular, Please let me highlight our guests of honor today. That includes Dr. David Chung Wei Kun, JP, Under Secretary for Innovation and Technology Bureau of Hong Kong Government, <laughs> Dr. Bernard Chan Park Lee, JP, Under Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development Bureau of Hong Kong Government, <laughs> Dr. Lee George Lam, BBS, Former Chairman of Hong Kong Cyberport Management Company Limited. Let's give them all a big hand. Welcome! It's my honor to invite the founder and chairman of Wildlot, Mr. Andy Fei Chi En, to share his welcoming messages with us. Please, let's welcome Andy. Hello, and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking your time to attend the SciTech Pioneers Virtual Awards ceremony. My special thanks to Dr. David Chung. Dr. Bernard Chan, Dr. Josh Lam, and our fellow sponsors. The mission of the SciTech Awards is to empower and support young people, scientists, and startups to pursue technological and scientific research for the betterment of our society and Hong Kong. During the last few months, we have received many innovative applications. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for all the hard work from our participants. The selection panels underwent a difficult process to select the best of the best. With this award, we are bringing a step closer to achieving our vision by building a collaborative platform for our new generation to inspire their creativity in an interactive an enlightening environment. While the pandemic has changed the way people live and work, technologies have played a crucial role for us to stay competitive in this new normal environment. We encourage experimenting and innovating. Like this event, we have adopted a visual format by connecting all of us together. We hope you can thrive in this new metal universe and bring you to the world which has endless possibilities. Thank you. Thank you for your inspirational sharing, Andy. It's your pioneering support to young people, so why not get to work with these talented scientists and visionary startups? Thank you. Now, please let me invite our guest of honor, Dr. David Chung Wei Kern, JP, Under Secretary for Innovation and Technology Bureau of Hong Kong Government, to offer opening remarks for us. Andy, distinguished guests, young scientists, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to join you all at the Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award Ceremony. First of all, I would like to extend my warmest congratulations to our young scientists and start startups receiving the awards today. I'm so excited to meet a group of young and energetic science and technology pioneers who impress us with the innovative ideas and dedicated efforts demonstrated in the R&D projects. Innovation and technology is one of the top policy priorities of the current term government. Since 2017, the government has invested over 130 billion to promote IT development. That certainly includes initiatives which facilitate the expansions of the startup base in Hong Kong, such as the 2 billion Innovation and Technology Venture Fund, as well as Corporate Venture Fund and a Macro Fund through the two INT flagships, Science Park and Cyberport, respectively. In recent years, the surge in the number of startups 
sharply increased among of venture capital and the emergence of all those locally grown unicorns company have reflected that our efforts are starting to bear fruit. And now Hong Kong has become the Asia's largest and the world's second largest fundraising hub for biotechnology. But we all know Hong Kong will not rest on its laurels. To stand up the support for the growth of startups, the financial secretary announced in his latest budget that the government will double the subsidy among under the technology startup support scheme for universities to 16 million with the will to encouraging more local universities to establish their own startups and commercialize their R&D results. The COVID-19 outbreak has highlighted the importance of R&D in advancing the adoptions of IMT solutions in our daily life under the new normal. Scientists and researchers, particularly in the fields of life and health science, have put concerted and tireless efforts to fight the battle against COVID-19. The government will continue to fully support the development in this field. In fact, one of the emphasis of the national 14 5 years plan is on the enhancement of the technological strength in the frontier fields such as life and health. To this end, the government will earmark 10 billion to further promote the development of life and health technology. We plan to set up an InnoLife Health Tech Hub in the Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation Technology Park with the 16 life and health related laboratories in the InnoHK research clusters and eight state key laboratories in life and health disciplines as a basis to focus on the relevant research work. Infrastructure aside, talent is the key to success in our future INT development. We must do all we can to nurture them. Thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts with us, Dr. Chung. Now, please let me invite our guest of honor, Dr. Bernard Chan Park Lee, JP, Under Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development Bureau of Hong Kong Government, to deliver opening remarks for us. Andy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to join you all at the Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award Ceremony an occasion to celebrate the valuable contribution of young, outstanding scientists and startups to our society. Congratulations to all the award winners. I can't wait to listen to your presentation and elevator pitch in a bit. Your innovative ideas will help pave the way for a better and brighter Hong Kong, and even perhaps the Greater Bay Area as well. My sincere thanks to the organizer, Why Love Foundation, for having this wonderful initiative and for supporting the development of scientists and startups in Hong Kong over the years. Indeed, supporting scientists and startups is an essential element in enhancing the local innovation and technology ecosystem. The government has all along been offering comprehensive support to them at the different stages of development through various subsidies and investment funds. We have invested over 130 billion to enhance our technology infrastructure and research and development, as well as to nurture talents. It is gratifying to see that our INT ecosystem has become increasingly vibrant with Hong Kong being the birthplace of 12 unicorns already. The number of startups increased from around 1,000 in 2014 to around 4,000 in 2021, and the venture capital investment in Hong Kong also substantially increased from 1.24 billion to over 40 billion in the same period. That determination for Hong Kong to succeed and significant efforts being made in recent years have not gone unnoticed by the central government. Memorandum of cooperation have been entered into with the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Hong Kong research projects have received national funding and joint research laboratories have been set up in the Hong Kong Science Park on top of the 16 state key labs in Hong Kong. All these 
have accumulated in express support for Hong Kong to develop into an international innovation and technology hub in the nation's 14 five-year plan promulgated in March last year, which also includes the Shenzhen Hong Kong Loop as one of the four major platforms for cooperation in the Greater Bay Area. For the awardees today, I'm sure that you will enjoy and benefit from the many initiatives and boundless opportunities in the INT area that we have prepared for our young people. What we have to do now is to give our young people support and encouragement. And that is exactly what the government as well as the White Lock Foundation have been doing. Once again, my gratitude goes to the organizer. I'm grateful for your invaluable contributions to realizing an innovative and flourishing future for Hong Kong. And my warmest congratulations again to the inspiring young men and women we are honoring today. I wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you for opening the ceremony for us, Dr. Chen. Let me introduce our guest of honor and keynote speaker today, Dr. Lee Josh Lam, BBS, former chairman of Hong Kong Cyber Park Management Company Limited. Dr. Lam will share with us his thoughts on the SciTech trend in Hong Kong. Let's welcome Dr. Lam, please. Andy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good day. It gives me great pleasure to join you all to celebrate advances in science and technology and the achievements of the winning scientists and startups. I appreciate it why Lot Foundation innovatively staging this ceremony against all odds and many other impactful activities despite the COVID-19 pandemic to build a constructive and helpful platform for aspiring scientists and budding startups to exchange inspirational ideas and spark co-creation, steering Hong Kong's sci-tech development forward. The past few years have certainly been bumper years for science, technology, and innovation. Businesses and governments have been taking a keen interest in science, technology, and innovation and ESG for their social, economic, and sustainability promises. From 2017 to 2020, Hong Kong saw double-digit growth in R&D expenditure, personnel, and patent applications. The Hong Kong SAR government has made unprecedented strides to promote and facilitate innovation and technology development by investing more than $130 billion over the past four years. In 2018, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange launched a new listing regime for pre-revenue biotech startups, turning Hong Kong into Asia's largest and the world's second largest fundraising hub for biotech. Also, Hong Kong is strengthening its role as Asia's leading tech investment hub with a range of new policy initiatives, including green finance, family office, ESG investment, and SPAC. In the coming years, these activities are set to speed up and scale up even further. Aside from market forces, local and national policies, including the 14th National Five-Year Plan and the Greater Bay Area Outline Development Plan, have prioritized R&D, innovation and technology, technology transfer, and a wide variety of other innovative endeavors across all segments of society and economy. These innovative activities are not only carried out by locals, we are also attracting talent from across the mainland and the world. People and companies are coming to Hong Kong to seize opportunities for business collaboration and regional expansion, venture capital and IP trading, realizing 
their bigger vision and ambition for the GBA market and beyond. Riding on the golden scenario in the GBA and regional landscape, it is imperative to propel SciTech through amplification of collective endeavors for R&D and advocacy for tech entrepreneurship. As Hong Kong's digital technology flagship and entrepreneurial hub, Cyberport is home to over 800 on-site and over 900 off-site startups and tech companies, totaling more than 1,700 Cyberport community members in our vibrant and comprehensive ecosystem. Cyberport is also the home base to five unicorn startups, two licensed virtual banks, three licensed virtual insurers, and the largest fintech cluster in Hong Kong. Through a basket of targeted incubation, acceleration, and tech investment programs, Cyberport caters specifically to priority needs for nurturing entrepreneurship in different development stages with support services ranging from talent training, seed funding, go-to-market assistance, and investor matching. Cyberport's diverse and extensive networks link up Cyberport community members to highly sought after technologies and services for operation development, business opportunities, and investment funding, laying a strong foundation for taking their enterprises to the next level. Recently, to our excitement, Cyberport startups' accumulative funds raised have gone through the roof to hit over 27 billion Hong Kong dollars, exemplifying investors and corporations' confidence in the value of the innovative power of our entrepreneurial community. Cyberport's ever-extending connections with the mainland and overseas partners also help Hong Kong and GBA startups and tech companies to go global and capture worldwide opportunities while attracting venture capital and resources for innovation from around the globe, facilitating the dual circulation of China's domestic and international economies. As the innovation and technology and R&D sectors continue to grow in size and diversity, Hong Kong will need all hands on deck to unlock our potential and seize the many emerging opportunities. We must work together with our GBA partners to venture deeper into science and technology to strengthen our innovative and competitive edge. We also need to enhance our SciTech ecosystem to broaden development horizons. This includes increasing knowledge and technology transfer among the government, industry, academia, and research institutions, attracting more smart money and risk capital for high impact technology projects and supporting R&D and its commercialization. Cyberport looks forward to joining hands with Wild Lot Foundation on this far reaching and meaningful mission, driving long-term growth of SciTech development in Hong Kong and beyond. Finally, congratulations to the winners of the Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award. Thank you very much to all and stay safe. Thank you so much for your insightful and inspiring sharing, Dr. Lam. Wildlot looks forward to working closely with Cyberport and many other stakeholders in the ecosystem to take the SciTech scene in Hong Kong forward to a brighter future. Wildlot received immense support from different organizations and individuals when we were preparing for the award and the ceremony. Now, I would like to offer special acknowledgements to our funding and supporting organizations. We would like to thank Innovation and Technology Commission for funding the award and the ceremony. 
We thank Hong Kong Cyber Port Management Company Limited as our supporting partner. We have Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Corporation. Entrepreneur First. HKAI Lab. Central Market. As well as special thanks to Mr. Michael Ho, Director of Our Crowd, Professor Jianhua Zhang, Chair Professor of Plant Biology and Associate Vice President of Global Research Collaboration of Hong Kong Baptist University. And Mr. Peter Chen, Partner of Assurance, Technology Media and Telecom Assurance Leader, from Ernst & Young, Hong Kong. We will start presenting prizes to our winners. There are two parts of the Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award, as we want to recognize and appreciate the contributions of both outstanding scientists and startups. There are four categories. Environmental Science Emerging Scientist, Space Science Emerging Scientist, Deep Tech Pioneering Startup Biotechnology Pioneering Startup First of all, let me announce the winner of Environmental Science Emerging Scientist. The award goes to Dr. Yan Guangzhou, a mechanical engineer from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. We have prepared a video so you can understand him and his work better. Enjoy! As an environmental scientist at HKUSD, I studied how energy could be efficiently used and conserved. My research work focuses on how to manipulate the heat transfer based on the fundamental understandings for the energy applications such as batteries, photovoltaics, and buildings. By improving the efficiency of energy conversion and heat rejection, my project will contribute to sustainable energy solutions and help Hong Kong or even the world to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2015. This is not only important to me as sustainability is close to my heart, but also critical for Hong Kong's smart city blueprint. Congratulations, Dr. Zhao, and let us present certificates and tax to him. Now, let's welcome Dr. Zhao as he will present his thoughts on efficient energy use and conservation, smart city, and more. Let's welcome Dr. Zhao. Among the top 10 problems for the next 15 years, energy is the top one. The following is water, food, and the environment. All of these three problems are also strongly related to energy. Let's take a look at the energy landscape in Hong Kong. Among the final energy requirements, around 50% is for electricity. The rest are for oil and gas. All of these energies are generated by coal, natural gas, or nuclear power. Because of the using of fossil fuel, a nuclear fuel, that will bring a lot of environmental issues, such as global warming, air pollution, and nuclear pollution. To solve these environmental issues, a lot of countries around the world are trying to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. This is the so-called Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Of course, Hong Kong is committed to take actions under the Paris Agreement. In 2017, Hong Kong released the Climate Action Plan 2030 plus and committed to peak carbon emissions by 2020. To achieve that goal, we need to partially or fully replace the current fossil fuel and nuclear fuel using sustainable energy. 
So there are two reasons why the sustainable energy is the best candidate here. First, sustainable energy is one of the safest energy sources. For instance, one terawatt of sustainable energy only causes 0 0.02 deaths. That is not 100, 20 times lower than the oil. Second, one kilowatt of solar energy only brings five grams carbon dioxide. At HKUST, we contributed to the Climate Action Plan by setting the strategy of sustainable and smart campus. Here now, more than 8,000 solar panels have been installed in 50 locations across the campus. All lab at HKUST, we are engineering the energy-related properties of materials from atomistic scale to macro scale. We are trying to design the materials using atomistic defects, locations, green boundaries, and the greens. And of course, we're trying to design the energy properties of the device directly. Why the multi-scale engineering is so important in designing the advanced energy materials? Let's first take a look at the lithium batteries. By using the nanotechnologies, we can improve the capacity of lithium batteries by 10 times. We can also improve the energy conversion efficiency of thermoelectrics by 100 times using the nanostructuring. And of course, we can improve the heat dissipation efficiency of the chips in the data center based on the multi scale engineering technologies. Today, I'm going to show how we contributed to the sustainable and smart campus, city, or even the world by showing two examples. So the first example is about how to improve the energy conversion efficiency of thermoelectrics using nanotwin. The traditional concept to improve the energy conversion efficiency of thermoelectrics is to decrease the thermal conductivity. However, if we are decrease the power factor at the same time. Of course, if we increase the heat coefficient or the energy conversion efficiency somehow, for instance, from one to two, but however, here, obviously, this is not the best idea. So the best idea is trying to decouple the power factor and the thermal conductivity and then maximize the energy conversion efficiency of some electricity. In our lab at HKUST, we are trying to be using the nano twin to decouple the thermal transport properties and the power factor. By using such a kind of strategy, we can decouple the thermal transport properties and the power factor, and then enhance the energy conversion efficiency from zero point zero three to around zero point five. This is the first example. My second example is about how to cool down the solar panels using a sustainable evaporative coating. One of the biggest challenges for the solar panels is overheating. The traditional way to cool down the temperatures is to using active cooling by water. Of course, it can cool down the temperatures of the solar panels by tens of degrees. However, it consumes a large amount of water and energy. In our lab at HKUST, we propose a concept by using the sustainable and smart coating. A coating can absorb atmospheric water at the low temperature and evaporate these absorbed atmospheric water at the high temperatures. By utilizing this cycle, we can then cool down the temperatures of the solar panel. A preliminary results show that a coating can cool down the solar panels by 5 to 10 degrees at the low relative humidity, such as 30%, and the high relative humidity environment, such as 17%. In the future, we are continuing to contribute to the sustainable and smart campus, city, or even the world by using the multi-scale engineering technologies. Thank you for your presentation. 
We can feel your passion towards the environment and sustainability, which is very close to Wildlaw's mission and vision as well. The winner of Space Science Emerging Scientist goes to Dr. Hugo Pfister, an astrophysicist from the University of Hong Kong. Let's watch his video now. As an astrophysicist at the University of Hong Kong, I study the dance that two black holes undergo when they happen to be close to one another. This research will be key to interpret future observations of the LISA, Tianjin and Taichi satellites launched by the European Spatial Agency, NASA and China. What I like in my work is that, when I sit at my desk in the morning, I travel to places we'll never be able to reach and study phenomena that occur on a timescale beyond our understanding. In the evening, when I close my laptop, I'm back on Earth. I believe educational outreach is part of my mission. Indeed, my research has no other motivations than understanding the universe and making everyone dream about space. Congratulations, Dr. Fister, and let us present certificate and check to him. Let's welcome the winner of Space Science Emerging Scientist, Dr. Hugo Fister, to present his research on supermassive black holes and its implications. Hello, my name is Hugo Pfister. I'm currently a postdoc between the University of Hong Kong and the Niels Bohr Institute in Denmark. I first want to thank the Wildlife Foundation for giving me the opportunity to talk about my research that is revealing hidden black holes with luminous events. So first, let's start with what is a black hole? And we will do that by looking at the center of our Milky Way. So here you have an image, a real image, and uh, we will describe every element in this image. So first you have the scale here. So the scale is very useful because it gives you the length of this image. And here you have about 10 light days. So a light day is a very large unit that is three tenths to 10 kilometers. That is a three with 10 zeros after kilometers. You may have heard about the light year, which is uh, 10 to the 13 kilometers. That is a one with 13 zeros kilometers. So it's a much larger unit than the light day. And these length scales are very large. So to give you an idea, the distance to the sun in this unit is 0.006 light days. So you have a very small number in this unit. And still here, we are looking very far away from us at the center of the Milky Way, which is 26,000 light years from us. Still, we are able to detect all the stars in this area. And uh, you have, uh, when you take this image periodically uh, every year, you have that stars, you can see the stars moving. And in particular, if you zoom in even more in the center of the Milky Way, you will see that this star is orbiting as an ellipse. Similarly to the Earth is orbiting the Sun as an ellipse. The difference here is that there is nothing that we can see in the center. But still, if you reverse engineer the physics, you can assess that there is here a massive object, which mass is around 4 million solar masses. And this is one of the best proof that there is a supermassive black hole in the center of our Milky Way. And actually, if you perform a similar analysis for other galaxies, you realize that most galaxies in our universe host a supermassive black hole. Still, it's not very well understood what are the properties of these supermassive black holes, their mass, for instance, why they are here, what are the effects on galaxies, etc. And understanding all these properties is the main topic of my research. So to do that, we first need to see black holes. And to see black holes, we need events during which these objects are very luminous. So I'm going to present you two phenomena during which black holes radiate a lot of energy and which I'm using to actually study uh, these objects. The first one is when two black holes are merging, they emit gravitational waves, which have been predicted by Einstein in the 1910s and observed in, the 2050, in 2015. 
For these observations, uh, the group LIGO and Virgo have been awarded the Nobel Prize in 2017. By chance, there will be a lot of satellites which will be launched uh, in the next uh, decade to detect the mergers of these supermassive black holes, so LISA and uh, Tianchi. So here you have a video, you see the two black holes orbiting each other and they radiate and emit gravitational waves which travel through time space and when we are able to detect these waves, we are able to understand about the nature of the system. You see that when the two black holes have merged, they form a, more, a bigger black hole and there is no more emission of gravitational waves. The other events that I'm using to study these black holes are called tidal dispersion events. So tidal dispersion events happens, happen when a star gets close to a black hole and is disrupted by the tidal forces. They have been predicted by Martin Rees in the 80s and observed a few years later. Similarly to gravitational waves, it's a very hot topic, and there will be a lot of satellites and telescopes built in the next decade that will observe a lot of these events. So here you have a star, here you have a black hole, and you see that when the star gets close to the black hole, it is disrupted by the tidal forces. It results in the formation of an accretion disk and a jet, which are very powerful and emit a lot of energy. So when these events happen, happen there, there is a lot of energy that is radiated away, so we can observe the black holes, and we can use these observations to understand the properties of these objects and these systems. And this is kind of the goal of my research. But in summary, as a researcher, supermassive black holes are very fascinating objects to study because there is a lot that we don't know and there is a much more to discover. But also when I'm doing outreach, uh, supermassive black holes are fascinating objects to describe because people are usually aware of these objects when they are very fascinated by uh, black holes in general. As I mentioned to you uh, in my previous slide, the future of research related to black holes is very bright. There will be a lot of telescopes and satellites built uh, to detect and understand uh, these uh, supermassive black holes. And as such, events promoting research in this field, such as the SciTech Pioneer Award offered by the Wilder Foundation, are very important, I believe, to help young scientists in pursuing their efforts. And finally, I want to thank again the Wilder Foundation for giving me the opportunity to talk about my research. Thank you for your fascinating presentation. It did transport us to the space. We appreciate your passion in public education. Wildlot looks forward to working closely with you and your team in the future. The winner of Deep Tech Pioneering Startup goes to Albacaster Robotics Limited from City University of Hong Kong. Let's watch the video from the team now. Have you ever imagined living in a smart city where robots and AI offer us the best solutions to live? Founded in 2021, Abercasta Robotics is a robotics solution provider that aims at enhancing the quality of services and operation efficiency in the healthcare services industry. With our patient transfer robot, the medical staff can transfer the patients automatically and smoothly. The robot can alleviate the workload of medical staff during patient transfer and provide great safety for patients themselves. We hope that with our innovation, we can be your life companion, enhanced to create a better and humane healthcare industry. Congratulations team, and let us present certificate and check to them. Abacaster Robotics Limited will present how robots can drastically transform workflow in hospitals and patients' experiences. Let's welcome CEO and co-founder Mr. Henry Lam. Hello, this is Henry. Today, I'm very honored to introduce our company and also our products. So first of all, 
We are Abercast Robotics Limited. We are established in last year, and our business is to provide a digital robotic solution. So, what is digital robotic? So,、um, you will understand in our latest presentation. And our vision is to create products that actually bring value to user. We treasure the value a lot. And in last year, we received the Hong Kong ICT Silver Award. In, in、uh, last year, and also we received the、uh, one million Hong Kong dollar angel fund from CTU. And currently, we are co-incubated by three party: one is University, Suns Park, and also Hong Kong Productivity Council. And here is our funding team. I'm Henry Lam, and all of us are graduate from the engineering background. So I would say R and D and also innovation is is in our company DNA. And our product. The robot is trying to solve the patient transfer in the medical industry. So, what is the patient transfer pain point in the industry? First of all, this problem can be classified into two aspects. One is the service provider, and also another is the service user. From the service provider, which is the medical institution, there are、uh, the patient transfer is very time and labor consuming. It takes more than five minutes, and also it takes more than three people. To transfer one single person, and it has a correlated with a very high frequent work-related injury. And from the service users, are which is the elderly or the patient being transferred, they are, they require a multiple transfer needed, such as they need to go to toilet, go to showering, and also have meal. So multiple transfer in a day is needed, and they are they have a very negative emotion on the transfer because they feel that they are being transferred like a cargo. But not human, as you can see from the illustration of the picture. So we offer a physical robot. We build a physical robot, patient transfer robot. This robot actually is the first autonomous transfer robot in the market. It can help the user to go to showering and also go to toilets by themselves. We emphasize the value of self-caring capability. And here is the basic function of the robot. Here is the video. You can take a look at the video to have a better understanding of our robot. As you can see, our robot have a、uh, uh, it 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 is a autonomous robot. We build a sl slam technology, which is which means the indoor navigation and also the mapping. The robot can precisely move from point A to point B, and the people just need to sit on it like a chair. And once the robot reach the destination, the nurse simply press one button, and the robot will do the transfer and also. The, all the、uh, heavy duty jobs are done by the robot, such as the transfer or sliding of the patient from the robot side to the bed side, and the nurse just simply need to、uh, adjust the position of the patients and slightly tune the、uh, um, tidy the robot. As you can see, one nurse actually is enough to do the patient transfer. And once the patient transfer is done, the robot will back to its original position.、Uh, also, try to serve other patients according to the online scheduler, and the process can be done by the、uh, one single nurse. So I we believe this technology is very simple and effective. And from the physical side, we have a robot, but in the digital side, we have a universal robot management platform. The platform actually have、uh, can real time update the position and also the status of the robot. And at the same time, the robot operator, if needed, they can surveillance the robot position or what the robot seeing, and also in case the robot fail or stop moving, the robot、uh, the operator can remotely operate the robot and back to its original position. And at the same time, we provide a simulation platform. To、uh, simplify the de robot deployment process, as we know that the client can give their beam model or the follow-up plan and、uh, import in the platform, and the platform will generate a virtual environment to train or to plan the robot routing in the、uh, virtual environment rather before、uh, deployment the robot. And our universal platform have three function. One is automate the mission of the robot, and also it can、uh, the robot can be remotely operated. And the most important thing is we provide simulation platform to make the deployment process more easily. And we believe our digital robotic solution have a very broad potential application. For the robot itself, it is very suitable for the medical institution and also elderly home. And for the digital side, the robot management platform it is very suitable for the engineering plants and also construction sites. And also we found that in the shopping mall or the housing estate, there are 
they are buying more and more robots from different brands. And our management platform actually is very suitable to manage all the robots from different brands to collaborate and work it out. And we are trying to find our different collaborator. At this moment, we have a Suns Park partnership in the uh, mainland China in Henan Prophecy. And also from the management, uh, the, the digital side, we have worked with the Dalfos AI and also in the robot itself, we are working with the Queen Mary Hospital. And to make our product more secure and more safe and also practical, we work with the Hong Kong Productivity Council. And so if you are interested in our solution, please, please feel free to contact us and we are um, trying to find more opportunity or more application in different industry. And this is our presentation. Thank you very much. Bravo to the great work of your team, Henry and Chi Long. Why not appreciate your work will have pretty disruptive implications in the healthcare industry and definitely would like to offer help along the way. The winner of biotechnology pioneering startup goes to Alice Limited from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Let's watch the video from the team now. We are a startup spun off from HKUST and is now part of the Cyberport Incubation Program. Our product aims at providing explainable medical diagnosis with our dynamic causal engine. With an aging population and declining number of doctors, there is simply too much data per patient for doctors to efficiently review. We have developed groundbreaking technology to automate clinical diagnosis and documentation helping doctors save time, make better informed decisions, and determine the best strategies to deal with complex problems. We believe our technologies will significantly enhance patient care, and we hope it will also make quality patient care accessible and affordable for everyone. Congratulations team! and let us present certificate and check to them. Let's welcome the winner of Biotechnology Pioneering Startup, Allos Limited, to present why machine learning models with causality is important and how this could revolutionize how we approach diagnosis in the future. Co-founder of Allos Limited, Mr. Isaac To, please. Hi, everyone. Our company is called Allos, and we do explainable medical prognosis for our dynamic causal engine. The Allos team is a world-class research and engineering team from all over the world. First, my name is Isaac. I'm the chief executive officer of Allos. We have Aditya, who is our chief research officer and is currently a PhD candidate at the University of Oxford, about to graduate. And also, he has formerly worked at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, also known as CERN, and other research organizations. We also have Ivana, who is our chief scientist and has over 21 publications in international journals and referees free international journals. We also have Lai, who is a researcher at the forefront of deep learning and reinforcement learning and an expert in computer vision. And he is pushing the boundaries of all of these fields every single day. So on the left, you can see a photo of a cat on a fallen roof. Does that mean that the cat caused the roof to fall? Unlikely. So this is a very good example to highlight that correlation is not equivalent to causation. And that is exactly what machine learning is doing. Machine learning is just a static model by correlation. And the results are based on the given data set. So it takes in all the biases and the, and the flaws of each and every data set. It is also very data hungry and it's not explainable. However, causality, the technology that we use, is a dynamic model by finding cause and effect relationships and adapting to ever-changing conditions. Our results are based on datasets, expert input, and therefore the assumptions made by the model are very understandable and clear to the user. Also, we use 60% less data compared to machine learning, and it is also very explainable in the terms that are easily understandable by our users. Causality is the future. In fact, it just won the Nobel Prize 
of economics in 2021. However, causality is a technology that is stuck in academia circles, and we hope that with ALOS, we can bridge this gap and bring this incredible technology with immense potential over to the medical industry. Our product is a very simple product for doctors to upload radiology images, test results, biomarkers, and in the future, patient history and genomics data on our platform. In return, the doctors will get a radiology reports, uh, image and text, they will also flag disease markers for the doctors and help doctors better manage their patients in terms of risk and prognosis disease progression. In the future, we hope that our, our platform can also be used for influencing treatment and also differential diagnosis for the doctors. In the past, we have already done a few medical projects. So for example, one of the projects we have done is a COVID-19 triaging prognosis and treatment platform. So the machine learning approach, XGBoost, um, achieved a 96.3% accuracy on 1,000 patient files. However, with ALOS, we use causality and we achieved 421 uh, patients and achieved a 94% accuracy. We can also, with the same data set, achieve 98% accuracy in predicting the mortality of each patient and 90% accuracy in predicting the resources required by each patient over the next 14 days. This helps doctors better understand and anticipate the needs of every single patient. We also did an ultrasound breast cancer diagnosis engine, which can achieve a 91% accuracy in detecting abnormalities in ultrasound images. We're also saving doctors up to 60% of the time by drafting a report for them. <laughs> and you can see the terms that we use are very simple and very easily understandable by the doctors. As you can see, causality is a technology that not only outperforms machine learning, but with the same data set, we can also achieve a lot more capabilities compared to what insights a machine learning model can, can deliver. So with our incredible clinical data analysis algorithm and our highly accurate ultrasound image processing algorithm, we want to combine them and create an early detection and dynamic diagnosis engine. And in the future, we hope that with the same product, we can influence treatment decisions and also help design and create better clinical trials for pharmaceutical companies. Thank you. And for any questions, feel free to contact me. We also welcome any collaborations with your organization. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac, for your presentation. We all do look forward to a brighter future with faster, more efficient and accurate medical diagnosis. Let's give our four awardees a big hand and congratulate their great work again. Well done! I guess audiences must be now very excited about their cutting-edge research and innovative projects. We have received many proposals for Hong Kong SciTech Pioneers Award. Besides the four awardees, there are also many young teams with great potential. Now, 10 wonderful teams will have an opportunity to showcase their projects to us in this elevator pitch competition. Every team will have a minute to talk us through their brilliant ideas. I'm Kyle from Panoptic AI, and we're innovating next-generation camera-based health and wellness monitoring solutions to shape the future of digital health. Our award-winning technology developed by a multidisciplinary team of PhDs from HKUST transforms a regular camera into a contactless health monitoring device. All it takes is 30 seconds and a smile at the camera of your smartphone, tablet, or laptop, and we can measure your key vitals like heart rate, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, stress level, and more. The data is then sent to our cloud data management platform that will provide a comprehensive portfolio about your health over time and actionable insights to improve your readings. We are empowering the next generation of healthcare, wellness, and insurance industries, and Panoptic AI is innovating affordable and accessible technologies to drive the future of contactless health monitoring. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ronald, the founder of Move It, Move It. We are working on a one-stop logistic platform by matching clients with service providers to transform traditional logistic industry. Users can easily make orders on mobile with three steps. 
First, fill in our web application form. Second, go through our AI furniture recognition. We'll detect your submitted images. Thirdly, we'll help you to connect specific logistic companies for relocation services. We also help users to find a reliable and easy way so individuals can enjoy easier quotation, including truck and man services, pack and move, door-to-door -door services, storage, disposal, and insurance for residential, commercial, and events relocations. If you want to explore more, follow me and have a chat. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm representing IT Side today, which is a technological startup developing solutions for pathology using AI. Our product AI Stain is a software which can virtually stain tissue images accurately for cancer diagnosis, which means two things. One, we are providing a user-friendly interface for pathologists, which reduces staining time from like hours to even a couple of days to just a few minutes. And secondly, because of the reduced staining time, uh, our product can be used for interoperative procedures to save lives of not only humans, but also animals. We are still growing and working on improving our methodology. And we have also applied for a couple of patents. Uh, however, once we are able to expand worldwide, we estimate our sales revenue to be around 50 million HKD per year. It's an innovative product which can save lives and we would be delighted to have investors on board. Thank you so much. I'm the representative of our startup team at Pure Gas Tech. Our startup is based on our research output. Uh, we are planning to develop several efficient selective gas absorbents to apply to industrial gas separation. Gas separation is a very important step in several industries such as the separation and purification of energy carrier gas and the capture of gas, gas pollutants in the exhaust gas. Our product will be able to significantly reduce the energy and environmental economical costs during this step and further promote the establishment of an environmental friendly gas separation process. And we will try our best to achieve this dream and let our products contribute to the environment. Anytech Limited is a biotech company that aims to improve novel drug development and disease detection by harnessing the power of AI and the analysis of electrical signals originating from the brain. These signals, more commonly referred to as electroencephalograph or EEG for short, can provide a lot of information about a novel drug, including its toxicity profile. Our AI-assisted EEG analysis platform can reduce the time and cost associated with novel drug development by 40 to 50 percent. This is because the drug's effect on the body can be observed real time via EEG signal. Our platform is also an excellent tool in detecting diseases associated with brain, including epilepsy, depression, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. By leveraging the AI platform's strength in pattern recognition, minute differences in brain signal can be detected before symptoms are experienced by the patient. We offer a wide range of products and services associated with our novel AI-assisted EEG analysis platform via a business-to-business -business model. Our clients are primarily from the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you. Hi, do you and your family use Chinese medicine often? Nowadays, there are so many types of Chinese medicine and they are getting more popular. However, there are fewer funding for herbal medicine due to climate change. We also have reports about healthy metal and chemical remains often. Nowadays, we are using 700,000 tons of herbs just for making Chinese medicine. How should we deal with this? We are Fetchy. We are using a soilless agriculture method with IoT system and AI algorithms. We can go root-based crops compared to most of the solution on market. This farming method is to control the temperature, humidity, nutrition to mimic the original environments of those species so that we can grow something that are not supposed to live in here. Our aim is to grow anything, anywhere with a stable quality. Thank you. Hi, I am Sam. Founder of Local Works. Our aim is to drive urban greening and development of smart green cities with technology. Urban cities like Hong Kong are concrete jungle with limited space. It is difficult to see green plants. Therefore, we leverage 
called Internet of Things Technology to develop a sustainable and easy to manage solution for vertical garden dedicated for the limited space, both indoor and outdoor. Urban greening is far beyond decoration for buildings. It takes care of human health as well. Engaging in planting process helps us to relieve stress, which is essential for us due to the pandemic issues in recent years. So adopt our solution to create a smart and green cities together. Thank you. I'd like to invite you to imagine a reality where animal welfare is at the front, front, forefront of things. And we can achieve that through my startup, Sissify, which intends to improve up the collaboration between animal shelters, pet owners, and veterinarians. And we can do that through digitization and having a distributed database, which is immutable and improves trust. And we will uh, be improving uh, the, the uh, value for each different uh, stakeholder, such as uh, televetinary services, uh, holistic care, better insurance, uh, by using the data generated through uh, uh, in each individual practice. Um, so that is the goal of Sysify. Thank you. I'm Zhang Shi, I'm the, the PSC of the UP Tech. We are working on the RFID system for smart manufacturing and smart cities. We use RFID to provide all kinds of sensing parameters in industry and the cities so that we can provide a passive and scalable solution, especially for the areas that the power is not available. We are the team of Atlanta optimization and energy harvesting artificial so that we can overcome the technical challenges raised in the distributed and the massive scenarios. Currently, we are working with EMSC CTU to provide the PVC pipe blockage systems. We are working on the mobile platform development so that we can deploy the technology on more applications such as stress structure healthy monitor in smart building, safety monitor in smart home, and it's the in industry. So this type of technology have more application and uh, it's, it's good to be uh, invested. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Joe Bo. Uh, our program is Binovo Biotechnology Complete. We are a team focused on genomic and data mining of pets. Um, animals are friends of human. Pets are our family members. So we want to help them. The best solution is pet genetic testing and analysis for every pet. Our target customers are pet owners at hospital and doctors, insurance companies, and at um, our products and process is about simple, expressed lab test and report. We have built B2B business for institution in the past, and we are extend to the C business. Um, so we have registered company in Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Thank you. Very exciting pitches and ideas. So now, let me introduce the judging panels for the Elevator Pitch Competition. We have Ms. Elaine Wong, CEO of Wildlock Foundation. Mr. Peter Chen, Partner Assurance, Technology, Media and Telecom Assurance Leader from Ernst Young, Hong Kong. Mr. Timothy Zhen, Executive Director from HK AI Lab. Ms. Jessica Chen, Interim General Manager and Head of Program from Entrepreneur First Singapore. Let's have the feedback on the competition. I saw the presentation of amazing teams, which demonstrate indeed they are the pioneers in their respective deep tech areas. I saw teams trying to apply AI, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, IoT, big data to address different kinds of solutions. 
addressing some of the uh, important needs of uh, people and also try to apply a lot of these uh, technology to address the UN SDG goals. For example, I saw companies or um, teams using artificial intelligence to, uh, and also um, technology to address some of the climate change issues. And also some of them try to address and apply the solution uh, addressing the needs of uh, smart cities. I also address uh, some of more day-to-day -day needs like uh, helping uh, uh, people or, or, or uh, uh, doctors to address the needs of the patients. I also more close to my heart because I saw them some of the solution is addressing the needs of the pets lovers. So all these are indeed very amazing. I really appreciate all the effort by the respect teams. I really hope they could apply the technologies, the solution, the research, or real life application to also start up their own business, start up their own startups, and eventually helping communities like the one in Hong Kong. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Timothy Lu. I'm very grateful to be invited by Why Not to be a member of the judge panel of the Hong Kong Sign Tech Pioneers Award. It is my great pleasure to be able to listen to all the contestants for the pitches, and it is a challenge for them to do it in such a limited time and they're able to explain clearly what the business plan and idea is about. Of course, they are better ones and we'll see the result in the award ceremony. And, uh, but it is my pleasure to be able to point out that many of them are able to clearly point out the three key things about the presentations. One is the product descriptions and the solutions that they are talking about to solve the benefits, uh, to solve the problems of the customers. Uh, they were able to clearly point out the benefits of their products and services. And number three is how they explain to us, the judge, uh, the potential of their target business market so that we see that it will be a fruitful venture for them. And I really, my pleasure to uh, congratulate the final award winners and hopefully we'll see more such a passionate startup in the future. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jessica from Entrepreneur First. I really enjoyed seeing all of the submissions for the Hong Kong SciTech Pioneer Awards, and in particular enjoyed the variety of ideas that were submitted. I was very excited to see that many of the contestants and applicants were addressing very, very large markets for the most pressing issues in our society today using cutting edge technologies. In particular, many were addressing problems in healthcare, agriculture, and the environment. It's a very tough environment to be presenting with passion and enthusiasm, especially when we are now all operating in a remote and virtual world. But the applicants were all able to bring their enthusiasm and passion for their ideas. And that was very encouraging to see. So I look forward to seeing where these ideas go in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Let me invite Elaine to announce the winners of the elevator pitch. Elaine, please. Thank you, Peter, Tim, and Jessica to be our judging panel. Yes, we are all very impressed by the spirit of creativity and innovation that participants show us how science and technology can transform our lives for better. This competition has been very competitive and actually it's not an easy decision to choose only two winners. After some deliberation, now we are proud to announce that the best potential startup award goes to IT Side Company Limited. ITSI uses innovative application of artificial intelligence to aid pathologists, doctors, and veterinarians during disease diagnosis. The potential for impact and the disruption is enormous, and they have considered multiple factors to enable successful rollout of the products. It's a very well thought out proposal with practical and innovative ideas. Well done. The Best Elevator Pitch Award goes to Movie Movie Limited. The presenter, Ronald, is confident and well articulated. He knows the product well and is able to attract the attention of the listener to understand more about the logistic platform. Ronald also has good delivery skills like maintaining eye contact and uses open gestures to engage the audience. Overall, he is a very good presenter. 
We recognize science and technology transformation is a never-ending journey, and we hope this award can encourage our new generation to come up with more brilliant ideas and turn them into action. Our heartfelt congratulations again to ITC and the Move It, Move It. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine, and congratulations, team. Well done. One Lot is excited to bring together highly diverse and professional representatives from the ecosystem of science and technology in Hong Kong. Now, here comes panel discussion. Let me take a moment to introduce our panels. First, we have Dr. Lee George Lam, BBS, and he is the former chairman of Hong Kong Cyberport Management Company Limited, with years of experiences in senior roles in different multinational companies. Welcome, Dr. Lam. We have Mr. Wilson Chen, and he is currently the Associate Director of Partnerships from Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Corporation. And Science Park is one of the key players in our ecosystem. Welcome, Wilson. Then we have um, Mr. Michael Cole. So Michael is a director from our crowd, and our crowd is actually quoted as Israel's most active venture capital fund. And welcome, Michael. Then we have Professor Jian Hua Zhang, who is a professor of plant biology and associate vice president of global research collaboration from Hong Kong Baptist University, and he's a leading scientist in the field of biotechnology. Welcome so much, uh, Professor Zhang. So you see the deep tap. Uh, development and future uh, usually come hand in hand with the progress of scientific research and advanced R&D. But we all know that the journey of technology transfer could be pretty challenging at times. We found that there are many patents or IPs actually sitting in the laboratories. This is questions for Dr. Lam and Professor Zhang. It will be great if you can share with us what the key challenge in terms of scientific research technology transfer, and then take these to deep tech startups forward is. May I like, welcome uh, Dr. Lam, please. We, we are well positioned, yeah, but we have to fix this problem. How to make these top caliber people and their family you know, feel at home. And that involves not just the hardware, it, it, it's the total, it's a system engineering uh, uh, solution that, that that is called for. Uh, in, in Chinese, we call it an ji le ye. Uh, we have to uh, attract, but retain, and make the best out of, you know, uh, the talent and Hong Kong. You know, so I think that's a that's a governance issue, a policy issue as well. We need to fix. Another is really the uh, the the ta talent and money. You know, they are mirror images. But I think we need to invest more in universities. We uh, we, we cannot take the shortcut. Uh, we need to invest more on the current strength that we have in basic uh, sciences. Lastly, how do you make the top talents, the professors, the graduate students, you know, embracing innovation, entrepreneurship, and uh, technology transfer, commercialization, and social impact, and all that? And, and that is, we have to think about the entire incentive system to motivate our top minds to do more in the entrepreneurial area and to to commercialize their, their, their finding. And I would love to hear more from um, Professor Zhang. You can see my post has got a title, Global Research Collaboration. We are, that means we are not limited. We are not limited in Hong Kong, we just grew out. Uh, by scale, uh, uh, HKBU is relatively small liberal arts university we, cl uh, we claim ourselves here. Yes. And uh, even our largest university in Hong Kong, like Chinese U, uh, uh, UST, Hong Kong UST, they are relatively just small. Each 
research, research direction, you may have found, found a few people working on it. But if you go collaboration, go outside, you found there's no limit. The main power is there, the technology expertise are there. If you can make use of their expertise, also your effort and your expertise, you can make lots of things unimaginable happen. Uh, so things, things are uh, lots of opportunities. That's, uh, that's, this, this, uh, that's something we, we are pushing very hard at the moment. And uh, again, we need some time. We need to recruit more academics. And, uh, and also we need to tell them the evaluation system, the assessment system are different from we had before. Because over the years, uh, the old evaluation system uh, looking at the papers, whether you are published uh, good papers with high citation, we are in good uh, uh, in, in top journals. Uh, that is true. We still need that as a university. We still need to do that because the university is a place to create knowledge. But we still should not forget we have expectation from society, from people, from from public that uh, we need to help the society to develop our niche. And uh, as we said, uh, Hong Kong we has such a potential to do more. Why our university sitting there not put our efforts in it and try to make a difference? So that's something I, I believe we are pushing to. And uh, I'm pretty optimistic in a few years, we will see uh, lots of such good things will happen. And we will see uh, universities are indeed are changing. And we are doing more and more to encourage knowledge transfer and and also very useful technology, not just the technology sitting on the patents and sitting there, nobody use it. We need to doing research that can be adopted, quickly used by the industry. That's something we are pushing to. Thank you, Yang, and thank you, George. That's awesome, yeah. um, Professor Zhang. This is also one thing that Wilo is actually very passionate about, is being, you know, the bridge and bring people together and encourage collaborations because there are challenges, but these also presented really unprecedented opportunity so that we can have next level innovation and engineering. In this SciTech journey, lately with the new budget from uh, the government, uh, 2022 to 2023, um, and they're doubling the subsidy amount under the technology startup uh, support scheme for universities to 60 million uh, Hong Kong dollars. We trying to commercialize uh, these uh, breakthrough uh, science and technologies um, the individual needs to be very much in touch with the market and understand what the world is, uh, what is happening in the world, what is the latest trend, what is needed in the market. Um, say, for example, metaverse, you know, is a buzzword for now, but uh, no one actually knows what, well, how, how, uh, how it is going to be applied, how it is going to be used, how profit is going to be made. Um, your university is very good at understanding and producing those uh, technologies. In Science Park and, uh, of course, uh, in the incubation in Cyberport, we provide a lot of, we create a lot of programs, uh, not just funding programs, but a lot of support services as well, uh, like investment supports, uh, commercialization supports, reaching out to the corporate, things like that. And also, um, the government is also providing a lot of business-based supports uh, to uh, uh, various um, uh, uh, startups. Like uh, they have this um, PSTS uh, program, which um, help companies to bring their new products or services and trial at uh, different non-profit making organizations and uh, supporting, providing that uh, this uh, uh, POC is very important for the company because they need reference cases. And um, say, for example, the uh, EMSD, the Electrical and Mechanical Department of Hong Kong, they, uh, uh, they would be the, uh, uh, the openest department in Hong Kong. Well, traditionally, we think that the government departments are very uh, uh, conservative and uh, they, they, all the vendors on their vendor list are like uh, giant companies, uh, 
hard to be uh, get onto the the vendor list. But no, actually, um, the EMSD has created this new platform, and they actively go out and uh, you know connecting startups with. Uh, uh, different electromechanical you know, lift companies, MTRs, with the uh, uh, the much resources poured into the ecosystem by the government, we do see a bright future in the, in the coming next few years. First of all, uh, we want to make sure we enhance the ecosystem without delay because uh, I mentioned before that the Hong Kong government has invested more than $130 billion over the past four years. Bravo! And we need to do more. And this is not spending, this is investment for the future of Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area. Second, I really think that we need to make Hong Kong even more global, as I mentioned earlier. Michael has a lot of connection with Israel, for example. We we have to, you know, work closely with Israel. You know, uh, the startup nation now even smaller than Hong Kong's population. Hong Kong already has extensive links with the the tech hubs around the world. This is to to link up all these major hubs and key research uh, clusters among global universities. This can be a, a metaverse application for Hong Kong. I think Why Lot Foundation is is really doing good work now uh, to to provide a digital platform, constructive and helpful platform to to bring all these scientists and startups together. The approach is teamwork because we cannot do it alone. We have to mobilize the whole of Hong Kong community to do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lam. Lam, you guys were talking about metaverse. So I do want to talk about this because it's really hot right now. It's really popular. So what opportunities will the rise of metaverse offer to scientists and startups? And I think, Michael, you work in a venture capital. I appreciate if you can share with us, Michael. But I think metaverse itself is still uh, in its very early stage. Like if you are thinking about like uh, living inside a complete like kind of venture uh, vir virtual world like a uh, matrix or Ready Player One, and we, we are nowhere close to that yet. But like a uh, if if you think about like a uh, um, a long term more approach, like uh, we tend to in, in human like society, we tend to overestimate the impact of technology in a short time but we all underestimate the, the effect in the long run. So we have a very high expectation of metaverse happening maybe in the next uh, few months or one year. And I don't, I don't think that will be the case. However, like um, even though like uh, we are not ready for like a truly kind of uh, uh, immersive experience at the moment. However, I think uh, the opportunity actually lies on building the infrastructure that towards that direction, so to enable the metaverse to to kind of expand itself later. So in uh, in venture capital world, uh, we see quite a lot of like a uh, successful business that are generating like massive traction and like a uh, uh, good profit, like uh, such as like building the digital payment system, building the like a uh, digital identification, like the uh, 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 crypto KYC and and like a. Uh, Everyone have their own uh, identification in in like using the using the digital ID those kind of things, and like um, I think each of them like uh, the, the 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 element that we add together bit by bit will at the end bring us to us a complete kind of experience of, of the metaverse, and also think about it like uh, what what is capital, like what what is valuable for for human. Is that like a, when you put your time into something and that becomes valuable in kind of metaverse or, or virtual world, then, then you can think about how to engage people you like to put their time onto using their software or, or hardware. So so I think those is where the opportunity actually lies. So that's my view.
we see, for example, this need for O2O, seamless, and how to, as Yang said, augment and enhance our real life scenario. And uh, we also now think about, we need to think about and solve problems, uh, what I loosely call, call uh, metaverse governance. Uh, so when we start to buy a piece of virtual land uh, and so on and so forth, we, we need some regulation and governance. I also see a lot of opportunities in digital assets. I mentioned earlier about the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Partnership Framework, Chapter 12. The whole chapter is talking about e-commerce. Or if you if you expand it a little bit, it's the metaverse. Should we try carbon trading as well? And these are all digital assets. So echoing what Dr. Lam has said, what matters is actions. Let's make it happen. And thank you so much all for uh, participating today's panel discussion again. Wonderful panel discussion. Wildlot looks forward to collaborating closely with all of you so our entrepreneurial scientists and innovators will realize their dreams and we can build a more relevant Hong Kong with a bright future. Thank you to our panels and all the teams for participating in this elevator pitch competition. It's extremely exciting for Wildlot to start working with all of you and see how we can help you all realize your dreams and visions. Thanks again for our honorable and distinguished guests joining us today to celebrate this wonderful SciTech scene and talents in Hong Kong. Wish you all an original, experimental and healthy year ahead, filled with delightful surprises from breakthroughs from science and technology. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>